Thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. I've been doing more and more videos here in the workshop and it's really difficult for me to get some of the shots that I'm trying to do because I'm working in this small garage. The camera seems like it's always in the way. I'm either trying to walk around it or if I'm trying to get a close-up shot of something, the camera's right in the way and I have to reach around it. It makes it really awkward to work. So the first part of taking care of this was a build that I just finished where I put a contraption on the ceiling that moves back and forth and is going to give me complete coverage of the workshop. Now all I need to do is hang a camera arm for it. And that's what this microphone's here for. This is just a prop. I don't even have it plugged in. But this gave me an idea of what I could do. I'm going to build something like this that I can mount the camera to, except I'm going to hang it from the ceiling and hopefully be able to move it all around and get access to all the corners of the garage, everywhere in between. What I ended up doing was downloading FreeCAD and playing around with some designs in there until I eventually came up with something that I think is going to work. Once I settled on a design I was happy with, I sent the images over to Lightburn and I burned the images onto three-quarter plywood, which is what I'm going to use for this build. And cut everything out with my jigsaw, staying away from the line. Because these pieces need to be pretty exact. I mean, we're not building a rocket ship here, but the spacing of the holes is what's most important. So I wanted to use the laser, just make it easier than measuring. Because every time you measure, you have a chance of making a mistake. I cut most of the pieces out with my jigsaw because I had some curves. I wanted to make the edges rounded because I'm going to have to grab this and I don't want any sharp corners. Some of the cuts I did on my miter saw um, just made it a little easier because there were some long straight sections. So I did some of that on the miter saw. You know, you could do this with whatever you have handy, but this is what worked for me, the jigsaw and the miter saw. And then when I was finished cutting, I sanded down to the lines to get all the pieces of the shape I wanted them to be. After I had everything cut and sanded, I needed to drill the holes. It's very important that the hole spacing stays the same because these pieces are going to be in pairs. The arms are going to go in between the sections like a sandwich. So when I was drilling the holes, I just used some bolts to keep the pieces lined up. Drilled the first hole put the bolt in, drill the next hole, put another bolt in. That way I would be sure that in pairs the holes would be lined up exactly so that way when I put everything together it will go together much easier and hopefully the mechanism will work better. The arm length for these mechanisms isn't that important as long as they're the same length in pairs so that way the mechanism won't bind up so you need the arms to be the same length in pairs. I just made them all the same length. I think they're about 30 inches. It's going to give me a really long arm. If it ends up being too heavy or it doesn't work, I can easily trim the arms a little bit shorter. So it's better to start longer and work your way backwards if you have to. When I drilled the holes for the arms, I did the same thing. I used a bolt to make sure that the hole spacing was going to be the same on the arms in pairs. After I had all my holes drilled, um, I took a router and just rounded over the edges with an eighth inch round over just to make it a little more comfortable when I grab this thing to move it around. I won't have any sharp edges to deal with. So this piece right here is going to be mounted to the ceiling, the turntable that spins around. And then I'm going to have arms connect from here to here on this piece. And the length of these arms isn't important, just as long as the two arms are the same length. And the spacing on these pairs of holes needs to be the same. I'm going to have three sets of arms. So then this piece is going to connect to this piece. And again, these sets of holes need to be the same distance apart. They don't necessarily have to be the same as these but they have to be the same as each other. And then again, the arms need to be the same length. And then this final piece here is where I'm going to connect the camera to. And you'll notice that this is parallel to this. 
So you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to design one of these things that this right here needs to be parallel to this here. You can play around with the angles of all the pieces in between, but that's what's going to keep this as a parallel arm that this and this are the same when you lay out your pieces. If I decide that this is going to be too unstable and I can't use one, two, three sets of arms and I take a piece out, this end piece is no good. I'm going to have to remake it so that this angle matches this to keep it parallel. As I was putting this together, I realized the section of this arm that's going to mount to the turntable on the ceiling is not going to be stable enough. So I just cut a couple of blocks into triangles and put some screws through it and glued and screwed it to my adapter plate that I'll attach to the turntable. When I put everything together, I didn't use washers between the plate sections and the arms because I want to rely on the friction of the two pieces of wood against each other. Hopefully avoid having to add springs to this. I'm thinking that the friction between the two pieces of plywood is going to be enough that I'll be able to move the arm and it'll still hold its position. I only used washers on the outside and I used lock nuts. That way I don't have to worry about them loosening up as I move the arm around. Finished bolting it all together and hung it up off the ceiling track and my camera mounted way out here. It's easily supporting the weight of the camera and the monitor that I use. It's really easy to move around and adjust. You can spin it around. I should be able to get shots anywhere in the workshop now. Does have a little bit of a sorry. Does have a little bit of a wobble, but it's almost nine feet long, but it settles down pretty quickly. And I set up the camera head so that I can pull this out and tip it down. This give me straight down shots. So if I'm working on something on the workbench, I no longer have to worry about the tripod being in the way or filming it backwards and having to flip it around. I guess that's a little bit better so the shot will be right where I need it to be. I don't think I'm going to need to add springs to these arms. If I do, it's not a big deal. I'll just attach them and put some kind of screw eye back here, but I just have a couple of wrenches and if I need to snug it up or loosen it up um, until it works into where I have the tension just right. I didn't get real carried away with how I have the camera mounted to the arm. I'm going to see how it works out. Um, but one thing that I have is this Ulanzi claw. This thing is really great. You can see how easy it is to take things on and off, just like that. And if I need to do a high shot, I want my monitor here somewhere else. I can just pop my camera off and put just the camera on here. And I have a long HDMI cable that I can run to my monitor. It's the top of my tripod. I also have one of those claws on here. So I can swap things out and just snap it right in. I don't have to worry about messing around with those screws. Just go from one fixture to the next. Take this off. Put this on here. Put my camera back on. You can also turn these 90 degrees. Whatever you need to do. Hopefully you didn't tune out yet. The way I built the turntable mechanism using a Lazy Susan in the first video did not work out well, so I'm going to show you what I did to correct that. They only work in one direction 
because of the way the bearings are set up in them so I needed to flip it over and put it on top of the main trolley section so then I had to figure out a way to still have it be able to be accessed from down below so what I did was I cut a big hole in the center of the trolley section and that way I can attach a plate to the top of the Lazy Susan and then put a couple of pieces of plywood on the bottom of that and then attach my mounting plate on the other side of the trolley and that way I'll be able to use the bearings that are in the Lazy Susan and hopefully it'll spin a little bit easier because it wouldn't rotate with any weight on it. You'll see that I'm using cabinet screws to attach the different pieces of plywood together and I've offset them so I don't run into the screws. Get this all screwed through to the piece that's going to be on the top when I put it back up in the trolley. And unfortunately those cabinet screws didn't work out. As I was moving the arm around trying to get it at the right angle to take a shot for the thumbnail, the screws let go. What I ended up doing was pulling it back down again and I ended up taking out all those screws and I just put long bolts all the way through all four pieces of plywood and put washers and nuts and now I don't have to worry about that coming apart again. I think this is really going to help out with my videos in the future. Um, we'll see. Hopefully you stick around, hit that subscribe button and you'll come back and see if my shots are any better. If you have any questions or suggestions put them in the comments down below I'd love to hear what you think um, I try and answer every one of them so give me a shout out down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this build I hope you found this video helpful and as always thanks for watching all right I'm, I'm gonna be right back Forgot something.